What are you charged with on that? Attempted assassination of the President of the United States. Okay. If you were to be found guilty of this offense, what penalties do you face? From a number of years to life imprisonment. Okay. So that's a pretty heavy offense that you're charged with. Yes. You have entered a plea, have you not? Yes, I did not get to plea. What would you estimate to be your percentage chance at this point of being found not guilty? I have already decided exactly what I intend to ask the jury for. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I should answer that. Mm -hmm. Well, most of us, when we enter into a situation of difficulty, have at least some kind of estimate going in the back of our mind how likely we are to be successful. Oh, I feel, I feel definitely that I have a probably a 70% chance, chance of being found not guilty. In, on the percentage scale. Okay, okay. I don't feel that I'll be convicted of uh, attempted assassination. Mm -hmm. But you think you may be convicted of something else that will lead to some prison time? That's right. Okay. Now, because I've made a statement like that, this tape recording is strictly between uh, you and me and the attorney and the U.S. attorney. How have you been feeling, generally? I feel pretty good. Are you bothered to any significant degree by anxiety, nervousness, tension? No. Never have been. Even under these circumstances? No. I make the best of any situation I'm in. The press has made a number of comments to the effect that you're a mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. daft broad mm -hmm. wandering about in this world following uh, ill-begotten causes and so forth. How do you feel about that? I'm working through it the yeah. best way I can. I feel this trial conducted with a little bit of dignity would help tremendously. Mm -hmm. So you would look for your image to go up? Well, no, wait a minute. No. The, the judge has already stated that this is not a forum for me to express my views or for me to uh, do anything for my image, in other words. I'm mm -hmm. just saying that incidentally mm -hmm. that... You think your image would improve, though, by how you would conduct yourself in That's a court right. of law. How's your appetite been? Well, Doc, <laughs> the food here is not... Leaves something to be desired. Okay. okay, what kind of a dietary trip were you on? It's a healthy one. <laughs> vegetarian yeah, diet? Yeah, I'm a vegetarian. Okay. Uh, I try and avoid additives. Uh, sugar, I try. Ordinarily, don't eat any sugar. Mm -hmm. Starch. Um, so really, it's a, a health food kind of diet, vegetarian. So the newspapers have said, with what validity I don't know, that you have at times used drugs very heavily. That you have been on hundreds of acid trips or something thing. like that. Mm -hmm. The news media loves to say that. Yeah. That's not true. Tell me about your drug history, generally. During the late 60s, mm -hmm. when things were so radically changing and the young people were out in the streets more or less, that's a short way to put it, mm -hmm. um, I experimented with lysergic acid, LSD, mm -hmm. uh, and marijuana. I have never taken any cocaine. I've never tried heroin. I've never had any kind, I've never had a red in my life, which what they call a red, it's a depressant or something. Mm -hmm. Right, reds, yellows, yeah. rainbows, two hours. I've never had any desire to uh, go down. Okay. What effect did you get out of the acid? What effect? Yeah, what, what did it do to you, psychically? 
Oh, that would be a long, long explanation. Well, in that too great detail. I tell, I tell you <laughs> that it, it hasn't impaired me in any way. Mm -hmm. I became aware of the possibilities of different realities as seen through different eyes, as seen through the, the Chicanos, for example. I went mm -hmm. down in the, uh, I, I traveled in my mind into their world in East Los Angeles. And then I traveled into the ghetto and I traveled into high society and uh, like that. I look into the ways that people view the world. How many trips would you estimate you had? 100, 50, 20? No, I wouldn't say 100. I would say maybe 30. Okay. But I don't think that much. Okay. Have they had any legal difficulty at all? No. You've kind of ended up being the black sheep. <laughs> I don't know what they're calling me now. Well, I mean, you're the one that's had problems, uh, at least as far as society is concerned. As far as they're concerned, yes. Okay. The problem child. In their eyes. Are mom and dad living? Now, does this go on the record? That I'm the problem child? Oh, Don't you understand the so. inference of that type of statement? Well, I'll put it in brackets to indicate that's my word. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we're, we're talking now, remember what I just said, from my parents' viewpoint. Right. Right? right. Well, we're not talking from my right. viewpoint. Yeah, well, my comment here was patient is seen as the problem child, not that you are the problem child. You understand that they see you that way. We have a, we have a very... Actually, I think it's a unique understanding, mm -hmm. my uh, parents and I. Rather than viewing me even as a problem child, they accepted the fact that I wished to be independent. Mm -hmm. And they actually literally uh, allowed me to do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I was going to say cut me off, but they... they uh, didn't do it too severely. That time you were charged with something and the trial didn't come off. What were you charged with, David? Dissuasion of a witness. <laughs> Why was it dropped, Lynn? The It was not dropped. The original charge was attempted murder. Mm -hmm. This was a case where a girl allegedly received a hamburger with LSD in it. Mm -hmm. uh, she allegedly received the hamburger in Hawaii, and at that time I was in the States. Mm -hmm. uh, but this was brought as a conspiracy, and due to the Tate LaBianca trial that was going on, it was going to pass through uh, mm -hmm. with publicity. Uh -huh. Consequently, uh, I accepted a disposition. Isn't that what you call it? Would you plead guilty and do some time or something? No contender. I wouldn't plead guilty, <coughs> okay. but I did plead no contender. And uh, received three months from the county jail. At the present time, Lynn, the, the charges against you are that you acted all by your lonesome, right? That's right. So there's not going to be some kind of uh, allegation, as far as you know, that you're still a tool of the family or something like that. No. To, to get these, get the president. I feel like I ought to ask something about your relationship with Manson and the family, not in any detail, but again, I'm aware that there have been, you know, all kinds of allegations in the press that, you know, it was a really what crazy, hedonistic trip. Right. This is um, people's desires and fantasies. Yeah. This is another thing that I'm under. 
that he's under. Can you can you give me just a brief overview of your relationship with Manson and the family, and so that I can say I covered it in case anyone asks. <laughs> Who would ask? Well, I don't know, but I'm sure you know much of all of this has been seen at times by people as though this was an extension of certain beliefs on your part that got started at the time when you were with the family and so forth. Um, I don't know who would ask. It just seems like it's a very big chunk in your life between 18 and the present time that I don't really know anything about from your own lips as to how your, your life went mm -hmm. in the intervening eight years. And that again would take a great deal of explanation because of what you've read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm not assuming that point. anything I've read is accurate, rest assured. But can you kind of give me a synopsis of what happened between 18 and now? Is that possible? Well, as much as I feel that I legally am obligated, I don't feel I'm legally obligated to say anything, but I can say that, uh, like most young people, during the late 60s, we did a lot of traveling around, we did a lot of meeting people. We were not hedonistic, mm -hmm. uh, we were solely uh, the thought of being uh, out only for pleasure. Mm -hmm. We were concerned about what was going on, what people were thinking, uh, how people were being treated, and we found Dozens of young people out in the streets. Uh, some of them were taking care of themselves fine. Mm -hmm. Others of them were being abused mm -hmm. by any number of people who found out that they could just swoop into San Francisco and pick people up. Mm -hmm. And it was my feeling to um, offer these people a place to stay. For example, it was me who went out and found a, a young runaway girl one day who didn't have a place to stay and said, come on home with us. Mm -hmm. And um, subsequent to this, we young people would come to our house and say, can I stay here? And we'd say, you can stay here, but you know, you're going to have to be quiet. You're going to have to respect the place. And, you're, and if you just want attention from your parents, and if you're going to uh, take drugs, then you can't be here, because mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't do that. You can live in the back, you can live in the woods if you want. Uh, we'll see mm -hmm. that you're fed, we'll see that you got food. Um, we'll see that nobody hurts you. Mm -hmm. uh, we ran into a number of young people who told us anyway that their parents were abusing them. Mm -hmm. uh, one girl, in fact, who later testified against us, uh, told, called us up, told us her dad was beating her, and she was crying, and she, would we come and pick her up? Of course we'll come and pick her up. We did not have sex orgies, mm -hmm. and drug orgies, or cult meetings, or uh, hanging Christ in effigy, or pretending Charlie was Christ, or anything of that nature. This is all comes out of people's imagination. Uh, we were actually very healthy. We found out that by giving to each other and supporting each other and building each other up and uh, realizing that there is a joy in giving, there is a purpose in being able to uh, serve each other, uh, we found great satisfaction. Do you believe in God? Certainly. Okay. Do you believe in Christ? I believe that God is creative force. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My, uh, Life force. You don't believe in him as a personality? No. Okay. Do you believe in Christ? I believe a man hung on the cross and gave his life. Do for, you think for, he was the Son of God? Uh, I believe that as God being life itself, uh, the universe. Reflection. Okay. So you don't accept Christian I, doctrine as such, in terms of his being a personal savior that came and took everybody's sin on his back and died for them. 
I believe that he did indeed do that for humanity. Mm -hmm. I believe that he did. But as a man. It's a purpose, why he's been there. Right, okay, but as a very good man, not as deity per se. Uh, we are all potential deity without right. a lot of the confusion that we um, weigh ourselves down with and carrying a big load. Have you seen Charlie as deity? I just said, Doctor. Right, you said you didn't see him. You didn't think he no, was no, Christ. I said, we are all, we all have life force running mm -hmm. through us. We, the right. life force is the God. The tree is the God. Anything that's alive as opposed to okay. this uh, inanimate. Okay, life force is God. Your involvement in the current events, the current offense, then is in no way related to your relationship with Manson, the family, just a... Well, you're asking me again, why did I do what I allegedly did? Well, no, I don't want to get into that, because he's going to object. <laughs> well, he's not objecting, he's just told me, you know, Right, no, I don't want to get into your motives for doing it. What I'm trying to do is just... Well, and it's a hard to. it's a hard test to do what he's saying. Ordinarily, I would conduct this examination under forty two forty four by asking you a lot of things about the offense. Because particularly if you can represent yourself, because a significant part of being able to represent yourself has to do with whether you remember what happened, whether you remember your motives, etc., etc., etc. But because of the nature of this case and so forth, some special rules have come into play, which I don't fully understand because I'm not an attorney. Ordinarily, under 4244, you could bear your soul to me about the whole blasted offense and every intimate detail about it, and if you were guilty of sin, that could not be used to incriminate you in any way unless you and your counsel raised some issue or gave me on the stand the authority to talk about it. You follow me? Okay. Usually you're protected under 4244 against any kind of incrimination. Tell me this. There's some special don't you, rules don't for Don't you me. feel that? I'm not saying uh, that you can anal analyze whether I can handle the technical aspect, but don't you feel that I'm an alert person? Yes, that I think you're an intelligent person, I think you're an alert person, I think you're a bright person. That's, I isn't think that you're, what you're probably you're overestimating your ability to think as quick as an attorney on your feet. Now, if you indeed can have co-counsel, then you know I can see where that might bring it off. Right. What made you do the X in your forehead? Uh, we definitely marked ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the point of that? What was the purpose of marking yourself? Well. Um, it has different levels. On one level, it is a uh, cross that's fallen, a fallen cross. Mm -hmm. uh, on another level, it is uh, an X, mm -hmm. and the X is we are marked out of the system as it stands. We don't go along with it. Mm -hmm. And by go along with it, I mean uh, it needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. This was the, the uh, step that we took. Mm -hmm. and many, many people criticized us. Lynn, I, I certainly uh, think you have the capacity to waive the right to counsel. And, uh, I certainly find her to be competent under 4244. I certainly don't find any overt signs or symptoms of mental illness. 